Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, minimum swaps to group all ones together, part two. I don't think we've actually solved the first one, but honestly, this is a pretty difficult problem, especially for the beginning of the month. I think it's gonna be a long month. The problem is pretty simple to understand. The idea is that we have an array like this one, and in this array, we're only gonna have zeros and ones. So in this example, we have three ones and we want to group them all together so that they're all adjacent. So one way for us to do that is by swapping elements. Well, that's actually the only way we can do that. So we're gonna swap these two together. So this will be a zero, this will be a one. Now, obviously these are all continuous. So it took us one swap to do this. We want to figure out what is the minimum number of swaps in order for us to make them all continuous. This example was pretty simple. Imagine though, if we had a one over here. Well, in that case, we would just take this guy, swap it here, and then take this guy and swap it there. And so then we'd have all four of the ones in the middle. This is a bit more interesting. So here you might think we need to take this guy, move it there, and probably take this guy and move it there, and then we'll have all four of them in the middle. But actually, this already counts as grouping them together because the idea is that this array is considered to be circular. So these are technically adjacent to these. So that's gonna be something we need to deal with. And I'll show you kind of a trick that we can use to do that. That actually will be probably the easiest part of the problem. One thing I tried to solve this problem with was find the minimum length window such that it contains all of the ones. And forgetting about the whole circular aspect of the problem, it seems like it would work because we could do something like this. For the original example, this would be the minimum length window that contains all of the ones. And so the length of it is four. And if we knew the count of all of the ones in the input, we have three. So if you take the difference between those, four minus three, we get one. That's what I thought is a reasonable way to approach this problem. It seems kind of like a greedy solution, but it's not gonna work. Let me actually give you a counter example of why that is. So this is a pretty long string. Well, I guess it's an array, but you see a couple ones here, a couple ones here, and a couple ones here. Here are kind of the holes that we need to fill. So if I took my original approach, I'd say, well, this is of length 10. There are six ones. So we take 10 minus six, and then we get four. So of course, it's gonna take four operations, four swaps to get this, right? We'd have to kind of push these two over here, and then these two can go over here to fill that hole, and then we're good, right? No, it actually takes less than four. We can actually do this in two swaps. I don't wanna spoil it for you, so you try to figure it out yourself for a second. The idea is that by taking these ones and actually filling them in over here, we skip this hole. This isn't even a hole anymore because now our ones are all over here and they're already contiguous. There's six of them. Or we could have obviously taken these two and moved them over there and then they'd be continuous here. So our previous solution doesn't account for that. So we have to get a little more clever. I was just kind of staring at this for a second and thinking, huh, well, what's another way we could think about this problem? And then I realized it. If we have all of our ones and they're all contiguous, of course, that's gonna be of length six in this problem, right? Because we have six ones in the input. So we need a window of length six. So a similar but slightly different approach would be find the window of size six that contains the maximum number of ones so here we have four ones that tells us we're trying to fill these two zeros right because six minus four is two we're trying to fill those two zeros it doesn't really matter where the rest of the ones are they could be contiguous they could be scattered wherever they want to be but it would only take us two swaps to fill those holes so that's the approach that will work in this case in this example and it'll work in the previous examples find the window that has the maximum number of ones that is of size six in this case because six is the number of ones that were given to us in the input that's how you kind of handle that part of it. Now, to address the circular part of the problem, I'll show you two ways to do it. One of them is going to require extra space and one of them is going to require constant space, but it's going to be a little more tricky, I guess. For simplicity, consider we're given this input array. Now, obviously you can tell that the ones are already contiguous, but the way to approach this and considering the circular aspect is that any kind of post fix of this could be connected to a prefix of the beginning portion. A better way to approach it is just to take a copy of the array and concatenate it 
like this. Now, if you see, we can kind of consider any subarrays from here. Those are valid. We can consider any subarrays from here, but they're going to be identical to the ones over here. But now, if we take a subarray like this, it is kind of the circular aspect. We have elements from the end of the array connected to elements to the beginning of the array. Now, the only thing is we can't have something like this. Like, that's not a valid array because we can't just create elements. How are we ever going to get a subarray of length nine? It can't be longer than of length five. That's what I'm getting at because five was the original length. So no matter how we run it through the middle, it cannot be larger than five. But that doesn't really matter in our case, because remember, we're only looking at windows. In this example, there's two ones. So we're only going to be looking at windows of length two. So that's going to be perfectly fine for us. We would pretty much just do a sliding window like this, sliding window like this, this, this. And then this would be the one that we found that has the maximum number of ones, two of them. So we take the size of our window, two minus two, we get zero. Zero swaps is going to be the result. Obviously, this approach requires extra memory because we're going to have to create a new array by concatenating one to the other. Is there a way to do this without that? Yes, we can kind of imagine like this is there. The way I'm going to do that is by running my loop. I'm going to have two pointers. That's how sliding window works. We're going to have a left pointer here and a right pointer here. And the right pointer isn't going to go up until the end of the length of this array. Consider the length is n. It's actually going to go up until two times n. So we're kind of imagining like this part of the array is there. But what happens when our right pointer is somewhere over here? Well, let me quickly label the indexes of everything. Right now, our right pointer is technically out of bounds. If we try doing nums of right, we're going to get an index out of bounds error. But recall that the length of the array n is equal to 5. So if we want the actual value that should be here, the trick is just take the index r and mod it by n, which in this case is 5. If we do that, this portion is going to be 6 modded by 5. It's going to be 1. So that tells us that the element over here is going to be the same element over here. And that does make sense because there is a one to one mapping between these elements because they're just copies like these arrays are just copies of each other. So that's how you make the math work out and how you can reduce the space complexity from O of n down to constant. So we won't actually have this in memory. We'll just iterate our pointer up until two times n and then this is how we'll get what value should be in each spot so i'm going to get the length of the input array because we're going to need that a couple times i'm going to count the total number of ones in the input and thankfully we can do that with a built-in function called count in python and i'm going to have a left pointer initially at zero and i'm going to have my right pointer go not up until n but actually two times n i'm also going to keep track of two things what are the number of ones in our window. I'm going to call that window ones. I'm also going to keep track of the max window ones because that's going to tell us what was the window that had the maximum number of ones and how many ones could we find in a window of length this because then we can calculate the result like this. We know our window has to be of length total ones and the max number of ones that we were able to get is gonna be subtracted from this. So if they were the same, that means we had all ones in that window. If there were a few zeros, then this difference would be positive. Remember, we're doing a sliding window where the sliding window is always gonna be of this length, or at least that's you know the one that we're gonna be considering. So um, just like this, we're going to say if nums of right is equal to one, or we can just do this in Python, then we're going to increment the number of window ones. And we're trying to maximize the number of window ones. So we'll set it to the max of itself and the current window ones just like this. But remember, we don't want our window to ever be larger than the total number of ones. If it's smaller, that's not really going to change the result. So we don't really care about it. But if it becomes larger, then we have to do something. So we'll check if the length of our window, which we can calculate like this, right minus left plus one, is greater than the total number of ones, then we need to shift our left pointer. But at the same time, we should probably update the number of window ones in our current window. That can actually easily be updated without using an if statement. We can do this number of window ones is going to be decremented by this nums of left. So if the number at the index left was a one, we're going to subtract from 
from this. If it was a zero, we don't want to do anything, in which case this equation isn't going to do anything. That's the whole idea behind this problem. The only thing I haven't shown is the modding. So remember that these two indices could technically be out of bounds. So let's mod this by n and let's mod this guy by n as well. Whoops. Okay, so that's the entire solution. Let's just run it. And as you can see, it works. I think it's pretty efficient, but I know that the leak code run times are pretty random. As you can see, though, it's definitely a linear time solution. Technically, we have one loop here counting the total number of ones, and we have a loop here. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.